Welcome, Wonder School friends, to day six of our virtual vacation. Today we are traveling to the continent of Asia. And the countries that we are going to be visiting with our books today include China, Korea, Japan, Thailand, and India. And here are the books. There's Never Trust a Tiger, and this is our story for Korea. We have Peak, a Thai hide and seek, and this is for Thailand. We have Natsumi, and this is our story for Japan. Desert Girl Monsoon Boy is for India. And finally, The Great Race is for China. Okay, and now I would like to know what kind of food from Asia would you like to try for lunch? We have on our menu adobo, fatouche, kasha, and kimchi. And while we are traveling, what animal would you like to see the most? We have orangutan, panda, snow leopard, or tiger. Will you pick the same things as me? Let's read our stories and then at the, in the end I'll reveal which food I wanted to eat and what animal I wanted to see. So stay tuned. Peak, a Thai hide and seek by Min Fong Ho, illustrated by Holly Mead. And uh, the jut A is pronounced like shut and A in ABC is the exclamation that Thai people use when they play peekaboo with their children. Shut A, baby, peekaboo, want to play? Where are you? Where is the baby? Do you see her? She's hiding right there in the window. Swip, 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 swip. Shate, peekaboo. Oh, hi, dragonfly. Is that you? <laughs> Stop that tickling in my ear. Is my baby hiding here? Is the baby hiding around him? Do you see her? There she is. Ichi ichi egg, ichi ichi egg. Shut day, peekaboo. Red tailed rooster, so it's you. Flap your wings in the cold dawn air. Is my baby somewhere near? Do you guys see the baby in this picture? She's hiding behind the fence. Haru, 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 haru! Shate, peekaboo! Oh, puppy dog, it's just you! Sniff behind that rattan chair. Is my baby crouching there? Is the baby behind the chair, guys? No. Do you see where she is? She's behind a pot. Thoom, 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 thoom. Shate, peekaboo. Greenback turtle, <laughs> so it's you. Dive beneath the water clear. Is my baby splashing here? Do you guys see where the baby is in this picture? She is splashing. She's over here. 
Jiak, 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 jiak. Shate, peekaboo. Furry monkey, is that you? Perched up high in the banyan fair. Is my baby swinging there? Do you see the baby in the tree? She's over here this time. Shate peekaboo! Oh, Hornbill, so it's you! Stop that drilling so I can hear if my baby is somewhere near. Oh, look, there she is. She thinks that she's invisible because she's hiding her face behind the leaves. Hiss, 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 hiss. Shate peekaboo! Slithery snake, it's only you. Coiled behind the orchid rare, watching with that glinty stare. Where's the baby in this picture? Do you see her? There she is. Whom prowl, whom prowl. Shut the peekaboo. Oh, elephant, so it's you. Lift the flap of your floppy ear. Is my baby hiding there? Is the baby hiding in the elephant's ear? No. The baby's not even hiding this time. She's just crossing the bridge. Crom, cram, crom, cram. Shut the peekaboo. What a smile you have, what a sneer. I hope my baby's nowhere near. She's running. Do you see her where she's, she's running this time? Roar, 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 roar. Shut day, peekaboo. Bright striped tiger, so it's you. Did you lure her to your lair? Did you eat her up in there? Did the tiger eat the baby? No. Do you see where the baby is on this page? There she is. Enough, baby, of this peekaboo. No more hiding. Where are you? Do you guys see where she is? There's just a sliver of her peeking. Right there. Shate, Papa, peekaboo. Here I am. I found you. The Great Race, the story of the Chinese Zodiac, written by Don Casey, illustrated by Ann Wilson. Many moons ago, the people of China had no calendar. With no way to measure time, nobody could tell one year from the next. Something must be done, said the Jade Emperor, the King of Heaven. I will start a calendar and name each year after a different animal. But how can I choose which order the animals should come in? I'll hold a race, the Jade Emperor decided. Yes, a swimming race across a wide river. I will name the years in the order that the animals finish. The first year of our new calendar shall be named after the winner. He invited every creature in the kingdom to compete. Back then, Rat and Cat were best of friends. They traveled to the river together in great excitement. But when they arrived, their spirits dropped. 
The river was strong and swift. It rushed past with a deafening roar. And just look at all the other animals, wailed Cat. High above, circling in the sky, soared a creature with the head of a camel, the horns of a deer, a long beard, and eyes of fire. Dragon. Below him, Tiger prowled back and forth. Swinging from tree to tree was Monkey, chattering with excitement. Snake was coiled around a branch. Rat thought she looked very calm. Close by, Ox waited patiently. Pig was wallowing happily in a pool of mud. Dog bounded around, wagging his tail. Hare was gazing up at the moon, which was still faintly visible in the sky. Sheep sat watching Cockerel preen his fine feathers, and Horse stamped his hoofs and shook his glossy mane. I am the smallest animal here, said Rat. We will never win, howled Cat. Rat was silent, but his whiskers flickered and his tail twitched, and there was a gleam in his beady eye. Wait here, he told Cat. I've got a plan. Rat sidled up to Ox. How fine and strong you are, Ox, he said. Your back is so broad. I'm sure you could easily carry one or even two small animals across the river. Cat and I would love a lift. Of course, dear rat, Ox replied. You can depend on me. And so rat and cat climbed onto Ox's back. The Jade Emperor shouted, Ready, steady, go! There was a great squawking and bleeding and snorting as the animals plunged into the water. Ox swam sure and steady. It was such a smooth ride that Cat curled up between Ox's shoulders. He closed his eyes and began to purr. Rat could see Pig relaxing near the shore. And soon they passed Dog, who was playing in the water. Come on, Ox, urged Rat. Meanwhile, Cockerel had spotted something. A raft, he crowed triumphantly. Come on up, he called to Monkey and Sheep. This looks fun, Monkey shrieked as he sprang aboard. But are you sure it's safe? Sheep asked, clamoring up. Rat watched the raft wobbling as Ox, ox swam past. Overhead, Dragon curled through the clouds. He was too big to swim in the river, so the Emperor had told him to race through the sky, braving the winds instead. We're getting closer, Ox, shouted Rat. Keep going. Ox swam on, sure and steady. Now they were catching up with Hare. Hare had sat gazing at the silvery, moons for, silvery moon for so long, and it had given her an idea. She was hopping from round gray stone to round gray stone across the river. And there was Tiger, using all his strength to battle through the currents. Ox swam on, sure and steady. Now we're in the lead, cried Rat. Rat could just see the Jade Emperor waiting on the shore. He looked down at Cat, still snoozing in the sun. Lazy animal, he thought to himself. He'll have all his energy left when we arrive. He'll be able to run fast and he'll get to the finish line before me. Quick as a wink, Rat saw his chance. He sneaked up close behind Cat and <gasps> pushed, splash. Ox turned to see what had made the splash. He couldn't see Cat, 
but he could see the other animals and they were getting closer. He swam onward. Just as Ox was about to step onto dry land, down leapt Rat and darted into first place. The winner, the Jade Emperor declared, the first year will be named after Rat. Close behind came Ox, lumbering into second place. He couldn't believe his eyes when he saw Rat was already there. What? How did Rat get here faster than me? Rat may be small, but he is also smart, the Jade Emperor laughed. Soon after, Tiger streaked past. Third, called the Jade Emperor. Next came Hare. Then Dragon swooped out of the sky into fifth place. Horse was just about to climb onto dry land when from between his feet, out slithered Snake. Excuse me, horse, said Snake as she slid into sixth place. Horse thundered by seventh. Sheep was eighth, monkey ninth, and cockerel tenth. Dog came eleventh, and then pig. I needed to stop for a snack, pig explained. Pig is twelfth, and the last animal in the calendar, the Jade Emperor declared. Well done, everyone. You used your own special skills to cross the river. From now on, every child born in your year will share your talents. But what about Cat? Cat was still splashing and spluttering in the river. He was trying to swim, but he hated the water. He just couldn't make it to the shore. And that is why there is no year of the cat in the Chinese calendar. And why to this very day, cat and rat are still the worst of enemies. Never mind, said the Jade Emperor as he fished the dripping cat out of the river. You tried your best, and that's what's important. Now, let's celebrate. And the Jade Emperor rewarded all the animals with a wonderful party. There was dancing and decoration, feasting and firecrackers, and the animals rejoiced and wished each other wealth, health, and happiness. And on this page, it says the characters of the 12 animals. And so, do you know what year you were born in? If you were born in 2015, you are a sheep. Sheep are artistic, loving, and tender-hearted. They get along well with hares and pigs. Were you born in 2016? Then you're a monkey. Monkeys are happy, confident, and enthusiastic. They get along well with dragons and rats. If you were born in 2017, you are a cockerel. Cockerels are adventurous, kind, and hardworking. They get along well with snakes and oxen. Desert Girl, Monsoon Boy, written by Tara Derriman, illustrated by Archana Srinivasan. And this jacket says, one girl, one boy, their lives couldn't be more different. While she turns her shoulder to sandstorms and blistering winds, he cuffs his pants when heavy rains begin to fall. As the weather becomes more severe, their families and animals must flee to safety, and their destination shows that they might be more alike than they seem. The journeys of these two children experiencing weather extremes in India highlight the power of nature and the resilience of the human spirit. White sand, green field,
light fabric, thick shield. Patterned veil, covered hair, desert here, monsoon there. Trek for water, head to school, stitch embroider, learn new rules. Gather wood, home to eat. Dusty slippers, muddy feet. Flatten dough, fingers dip. Open sky, ceiling drip. Camels rest, goats swarm. Gritty wind, rising storm. Sand blows in, flooding floor. Tie the flap, seal the door. the tents, fill the boats, load the camels, lead the goats. They are both heading away from the storms. And in this picture, it's a windstorm. And this picture, it's a monsoon, a rainstorm, and it's flooding. River trickles, higher ground, thirst quenched, dry and sound. They are both going up the mountain to higher ground, both families. And here they meet. Round the fire, songs of joy. Desert girl and monsoon boy. Natsumi by Susan Lendroth, illustrated by Priscilla Burris. For a small girl, Natsumi did everything in a big way. Do you like her umbrella? She jumped high, played hard, and slurped noodles like a sumo wrestler. But, not so fast, Natsumi, scolded grandmother when they went to the park. Not so hard, Natsumi, warned father when she practiced her ninja moves. Not so loud, Natsumi, called mother every time her daughter shut a door. Only grandfather smiled and said nothing. Each year, Natsumi's village held a festival of traditional Japanese arts and her family spent weeks practicing for it. Natsumi wanted to try everything. First, she gathered flowers with grandmother, who carefully selected each bloom. Natsumi picked everything. Let's shake out any bugs, said grandmother. Tap, tap, tap. 
she gently wrapped the stems against her cupped palm, like this. Slap, slap, slap. Natsumi whipped her bouquet into a cloud of pollen, leaves, and ants. Not so fast. No, no, not so me. Achoo, sneezed grandmother. In the afternoon, father asked, would you like to help me with the tea ceremony? Yes, Natsumi cried, plopping down beside him. Father measured powdered tea into a bowl, poured hot water, and carefully whisked the mixture into froth, the color of spring grass. Then he added tea and water to the second bowl and handed Natsumi the whisk. She stirred, she beat, she whirled her tea into a cyclone. Father wiped green flecks from his glasses. Not so hard, Natsumi, he said. Later, Natsumi joined mother at dance rehearsal. Girls and women dipped and turned, flicking fans open and shut like butterflies. Natsumi flicked her fan open, then shut. Open, whist, shut, click. The harder she flicked, the louder it snapped. Whist, click, whist, click. She was a samurai leading troops to battle with her mighty war fan. Natsumi flung her arms wide. Launched like a rocket, the fan twirled across the room and bounced off Mrs. Tanaka's knee. Sorry, called Natsumi. Not so loud, Natsumi, whispered Mother. That evening, Grandfather found her slumped outside. Come walk with me, Natsumi-chan said Grandfather. No matter what I do, something always goes wrong, said Natsumi. I'm sure you'll find the right fit if you keep looking and listening, replied Grandfather. They strolled toward the village hall. Natsumi heard a sound like muffled thunder. Boom! Boom, boom, boom. The very air seemed to quiver. Come on, Grandfather, Natsumi urged. For the next two weeks, Grandfather met Natsumi after school every day and brought her home late each afternoon. When Mother asked where they had been, Natsumi replied, It's a surprise! On festival day, grandmother's flowers brightened the stage, father served tea to the mayor, and mother danced. When the rest of the family sat down for the closing ceremony, grandfather and Natsumi disappeared into the crowd. Thank you for joining our celebration, said the mayor. Now we have one final performance, the beginning of a new tradition for our village, our own taiko drummers. Boom! Drumbeat shook the eaves. Boom! Grandmother felt her sandals vibrate. Boom! Ba-boom! Boom! Boom! Ba-boom! Boom! Look! Father pointed at the smallest drummer on stage. Natsumi! Boom, ba-boom, boom, ba-boom, boom, ba-boom. With each beat, Natsumi's sticks flew faster. With each boom, she pounded harder. And one day, Natsumi hoped to be the loudest drummer of them all.
Never trust a tiger. A story from Korea. Retold by Laurie Dawn, illustrated by Melanie Williamson. Chapter 1 The Tiger in the Pit Help! Help me! Only one person heard the cry for help. He was a merchant on his way to market. He was carrying his pack of spices along a mountain path. Help! Get me out of here! The merchant looked all around. Who was calling for help? There was no one there. Then he saw a deep pit at the side of the path. At the bottom of the pit was a tiger. It was the most beautiful tiger he had ever seen. The tiger said, please help me. I've fallen into this pit and I can't escape. I'm hungry and thirsty and a bit scared. The tiger put his huge paws together and begged, Please help me out of this pit and I will never forget your kindness. The merchant thought it was wrong to trap something so bright and beautiful in such a dark place. So he agreed to help the tiger escape. He found a fallen tree and dragged it over to the pit. He yelled, Watch out below! and kicked one end of the tree trunk down into the hole. The tiger jumped to the side as the tree trunk fell down. The trunk was very long. So when one end hit the bottom, the other end was still sticking up into the air. It leaned on the edge of the pit. It was now a ramp leading out of the pit. The tiger climbed up the tree trunk slowly. He reached the top and jumped off onto the ground. He stretched his paws out in front of him and bent his back low. He flicked his stripy tail and smiled. Ah, it's good to be out of that hole. The merchant smiled too. He was happy to have done a good deed. They smiled at each other. Then suddenly the tiger jumped at the merchant's chest. He knocked the merchant onto his back. Then the tiger opened his mouth wide. His long, sharp teeth were right above the merchant's face. Oh no! Chapter two, the argument. It's good to be out of that hole, growled the tiger. It's going to be even better to eat you. Eat me, gasped the merchant. Why would you eat me? I saved you. So you did. But I'm out now, so I don't need you to save me again. And I'm hungry, so I'm going to eat you. But that's not fair, the tiger smiled. I don't want to be fair. I only want to be full. But I did you a good turn getting you out of the pit. You can't repay good with bad. Good deeds should be followed by good deeds, not bad deeds. The tiger sighed. All this arguing is giving me a sore tummy. Please stop talking and be quiet so I can eat you in peace. No, I won't be quiet. This isn't fair. You can't follow a good deed with a bad deed. I'm a tiger. I'm big. I have sharp te teeth. I can do what I like. Now be quiet. The merchant thought, all right, I'll be quiet and let you eat me in peace. But thank you, the tiger said loudly before the merchant had finished speaking. But only if we let someone else sort out the argument, the merchant said. 
all stop arguing when someone else judges whether it's fair that bad deeds can follow good deeds. Who could we get to judge? asked the tiger. Lots of animals use this path. Lots of, an lots of plants grow by the side of this path. We could ask them to be judges. Let's wait for someone to come this way, said the merchant. If the judges agree that life isn't fair, then will you be quiet? If they agree that bad can follow good, then will you let me eat you in peace? Asked the tiger. Yes, agreed the merchant. So the merchant lay on the ground with the tiger crouching on his chest and they waited. Bother. Chapter three, the ox's answer. An ox stomped toward them. The merchant said, uh, please, ox, can you help us settle this argument? I can try, said the ox slowly as he chewed some grass. So the tiger told the ox the story of how he had been in the pit. The merchant told the story of how he had rescued the tiger. The tiger said he was now planning to eat the merchant. The merchant said that was not fair because you could not follow a good deed with a bad deed. The ox thought and he chewed. The ox chewed and he thought. After a long time, he said, life's not fair. The tiger grinned and licked his teeth, but the ox had not finished. In my life, the ox said, good deeds are not followed by good deeds. I have worked for my master for many years, he went on. When I am too old to work, my master will send me to the butcher. Then I will be killed and eaten. All my good work will be followed by a bad end. So bad can follow good. Tigers can eat their rescuers. The tiger smiled wider. He lowered his teeth to the merchant's neck as the ox stomped off. Wait, said the merchant. That was only one animal. We have to ask someone else. Then will you be quiet and let me eat you in peace? Asked the tiger. Yes, if the next judge agrees that it's fair, the merchant said. So the merchant lay on the ground with the tiger crouching on his chest and they waited. I'm very hungry. The Trees Answer, Chapter Four. The pine tree above them swayed in the wind. The merchant said, we could ask the tree. So the tiger called up, pine tree, can you help us sort out an argument? I can try, said the pine tree, bending its branches down to listen. The merchant and the tiger both told their sides of the story. So, said the tiger, tell this foolish merchant that life isn't fair. Tell him that bad can follow good. The pine tree said, but in my life, good has always followed good. I let the birds make nests and bring up their baby birds in my branches. The pine tree went on. Then the birds carry the seeds from my cones for miles so that my baby trees grow all over these mountains. The more good I do for the birds, the more good they do for me. So life can be fair and tigers should not eat their rescuers. As the tree creaked upward again, the merchant grinned at the tiger. Off you get then. The tiger said, but the ox said I should eat you. The merchant said, the tree said you shouldn't. They looked at each other. The tiger said, one said yes, the other said no. They haven't sorted out. They haven't sorted out our arguments at all. The merchant nodded. We need one more judge to sort out our argument. So the merchant lay on the ground with the tiger crouching on his chest and they waited. 
Chapter 5 The Hare's Question A big gray hare hopped along the path. The merchant and the tiger both said all in a rush, Hare, hare, can you please help us sort out our argument? The hare said she would try. The tiger and the merchant told their stories at the same time. The tiger explained how he fell into the pit. The merchant explained how he helped the tiger. The tiger told the hare how he attacked the merchant. The merchant said how unfair it was. They both said, so please tell us, is it fair that bad deeds should follow good deeds or should good always be repaid by good? The hare said, slow down. I can't understand when you're both talking at the same time. So they both tried to tell her again. When they had finished, the hare said, let me see if I've got this right. The merchant was in the pit and the tiger was up a tree. No, 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 they both shouted and they tried to tell the story again. The hare shook her head. I'm sorry, I can't understand this at all. You will have to show me rather than tell me. Where were you both when all this started? Chapter six, back to the start. I was in the pit, said the tiger. I was on the path, said the merchant. Please show me where you were, said the hare. They looked at each other. Then the tiger climbed off the merchant and jumped back into the pit. The merchant stood up and stretched. Was that tree trunk in the pit when you met? Asked the hare. No, said the tiger and merchant together. Then take the trunk out, said the hare. So the tiger pushed and the merchant pulled. Together they heaved the trunk out of the pit. Now the tiger was back in the pit with no way out. The hare looked at the merchant. Do you still want my advice? The merchant nodded. I think you should just leave the tiger in the pit. The hare started to hop away. The merchant shouted after her, but, but, was it fair? Should a good deed always follow a good deed? The hare smiled. That all depends on who you help. The merchant picked up his pack of spices and walked away from the pit. He said to himself, I'll never trust a tiger again. And the tiger sat in the pit saying to himself, I wonder who I can ask to help me out next. Okay, are you ready for the reveal? Here we go. You have your selection in mind, right? What food you want to order and what animal you wanted to see. Let's see if I pick the same ones. For lunch, I wanted to try Fatouche and I wanted to see a snow leopard. Were they the same? And tomorrow we are going to be visiting the continent, which is also a country called Australia. So I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye.